So here's my first example that I want us to walk through. You can write it down if you haven't already. How do we work out the area bounded by that curve, y equals sine x, the x-axis, and those are the boundaries from 0 to 2 pi, just the standard values. Okay. Now I want you to remember, do you recall what was the big issue we had in the AP3s with the extension exam? There was one skill that you kept on trying to avoid, and that was graphing, right? Now you are not asked to graph in this case. However, it is strongly advantageous to you if you do, even if it's just a rough one, so you can see what's going on. So would you please draw a small set of axes for me? It's 0 to 2 pi, so we only need the positive side. Actually, I'm going to draw it over here. And this is just standard old vanilla y equals sine x. So that's roughly what it looks like. Okay. Don't worry too much about making this beautiful or pretty. Like this question is not about the graph. The graph is just a stepping stone a tool. But I am going to put down some boundaries. For example, that's zero. What's this endpoint over here? That's 2 pi. We should be starting to get a little more comfortable with that. So therefore, if I want to work out the area bounded by that curve, the x-axis between here and here, what is the area? How would you describe it verbally? Hmm. It's like this, um, this kind of camel hump shape here, right? And then there's another like anti-camel hump down here. And they are, remember, think about all of the patterns you're getting here. They're going to be the same size, aren't they? Okay. So I'm just going to shade them in here, just so my brain knows what it's doing. Okay. So how are we going to set out our answer? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is say, to work out this area, I need to form the right integrals. Okay, so remember the question does not say integrate, we're going to form integrals ourselves. It's an area, so am I thinking about signed area, positive and negative, or am I just thinking of things in terms of positives? It's just in terms of positives, right? That means I have to be careful because an integral just from 0 to 2 pi, you should be able to tell me with no calculation. If I integrated sine x from 0 to 2 pi, what would you get? You'd get zero, that would be the signed area. This camel hump and this anti-camel hump would just cancel each other out, okay? So I have to form my integral a little more carefully. I'm going to dissect this into two separate integrals. From naught to pi, that's the positive part, and then pi to two pi. Is that okay? So let's write this out. Naught to pi, I've got enough space. Now, I'm gonna put a minus sign there instead of a plus because yeah, this integral here, I know if I just go from pi to 2 pi, will be negative. But I want it to be positive, so this negative sign will cancel that out. If you prefer, you can say plus and then throw an absolute value sign in there. They end up being the same. I would prefer to do that because it's more succinct anyway. So, pi to 2 pi. Okay, and it's the same function. Yeah, do you, do you have a question? You just... Can you use this fact that it's symmetrical and just have 2 of pi to 0? Okay. Could we use the fact that it's symmetrical? Yes, please use the fact that it is symmetrical. However, I'm going to just say, I would encourage you to write this line first before you use the fact that it's symmetrical. Because look at what we're about to write on the next line. And I want you to notice how it's actually quite different to this, right? What Aaron's suggesting is this thing here, this second integral, it's the same size as this integral. Do you agree? Which one do you think is easier to evaluate? The first one is, right? Why? It's zero. We like zeros, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say two lots of the first integral should give me exactly the same thing. Okay? Now, I'm not going to write this first because it doesn't take into account all the information in the question. Does that make sense? But I can say this clearly goes into this, and I'm even going to give a reason. You don't have to write this reason. The marker will be quite happy if it's not there, but I like to write it, number one, because it's clearer, number two, so that my brain knows when I come back to this in the middle of an exam and I look at these two lines and don't remember how they're connected, because that was like an hour ago in the exam, this tells me how they're connected. There's symmetry to this graph. Okay, we've done, we've used our properties here, we've thought about the signed area, we've thought about how to use our properties. Can you integrate for me? Two's out the front, what does sine x integrate into? Very good, negative cos. You've already been exposed to differentiation and integration enough to realize it is tricky, it is easy to mix up. Differentiating that would give you cos, which is like so close. It looks really good, but 
it's not, okay? So it takes some time to get more comfortable with this. There's our upper and lower boundaries. That negative sign, I'm going to factor it out because it's independent of x, that leaves me a negative two. And then when I evaluate my, heart, my upper and lower boundaries, I'm just gonna write it in. You okay with that? Happy? This is one of the reasons why in earlier topics, uh, even though, sorry, earlier kinds of different integrands, even though zero, you would evaluate that and it would often just come out as zero, like with a polynomial. Here you can see that's not the case, is it? Cos of zero is so not zero, okay? So therefore you have to be extra careful. Cos of pi, cos of pi. Hmm. What my brain is doing is it sees the cos curve, right? Can you visualize the cos curve? Pi is halfway across and it's right down there at the bottom of the value. So that's negative one. What about cos zero? Positive one, because the graph starts up there and then it comes down. Minus one. Negative two times negative two gives me four. So just to be really neat, I'm going to conclude. Could you just slap unit squared on the end of your working? Yeah, it'd be okay, but I think this is nicer and neater and a bit clearer. How do you feel? You okay with that? Um, you can see how much we pulled on our prior knowledge in order to just like even get started on the question. You can see there's little traps to fall into like integrating sine, uh, integrating cos instead of sine or whatever. Um, one last thing I want to note. Do you think it's unusual? This area is so weird and wobbly and curvy, but it comes out to such a nice round number. Does that feel weird to you like it feels weird to me? I want you to think back. Um, unfortunately, a lot of you weren't in this class last year, so some of this will be a little bit confusing, but I'll explain to you afterwards if you like. I want you, if you were in my class last year, to think back to that rocket. Do you remember the rocket? We were talking about integration and why it gives you area, and Russell drew this really great rocket with an astronaut in it, and you know, all that kind of thing. And we said, when you integrate, right, it's like moving from velocity or speed it's like moving from velocity or speed to displacement or position. Do you remember that? That's what integrating is kind of like, right? When you integrate velocity, you'll find out, like, where have you changed your position? Now, have a look at the curve that is the primitive of that, negative cos x. What does negative cos x look like? We know what cos looks like. What effect does that minus sign have out the front? It flips upside down, so I think this is what negative cos x would look like, yeah? So what this here, no, well, what the whole question is saying really, from here to here, it's asking this question. What's the total distance you've traveled, the total displacement, right? After starting here at zero and ending over here at two pi. Can you see why the answer is four? Where does it start? He starts down here at negative one, right? And then where does he go? He travels upwards, right? Like this. He stops at this spot. How far has he traveled at that point? He's traveled two units from negative one all the way up until one. So there's like that journey. And then he does the return journey and goes another two units back. So he ends up where he started, but he's gone four units in total in his round trip. Does that make sense? Now, I just put that there just because it sort of rounds out that metaphor we introduced before. If you weren't here when I introduced that metaphor and you're confused, don't worry too much. But um, we're gonna come back to this idea when we look um, deeper into motion next term. And so, file that in the back of your mind that there's this relationship between the two.